devil see it. Amen. But this world is still going to reject him. They're still not going to recognize. Amen. Who he is. They still don't want to recognize the power that he holds. All they can see is what it's going to do bad to their lives. All they can see is what they think that they're going to lose. Amen. All they can see is, is the hurt that might come upon them. Amen. But here, amen, I see a man that just after that, after he goes back across, amen, the sea back to his own city, amen, he finds himself a publican of all people. Amen. Somebody, everybody despised. A tax collector. A dirty, filthy, cheap, rotten snake. Amen. He goes to him. Amen. And even when there was some folks, probably some good folks all over across in Jew. Uh, I can't say it. Uh, amen. That place where he, uh, where he delivered those two uh, demon possessed men. Uh, amen. Even though there was probably some good folks over there, they refused to recognize uh, and follow the one who had power. Uh, amen. Over the devils that nobody else could control. Uh, amen. But he crosses back over. Uh, and we find him here. Amen. A man sees what he does. He realizes that God can forgive Jesus. Can forgive sins. And all Jesus has to do is say, follow me. And there a hungry heart comes up. And he says, all right. I'll follow you, Jesus. I'll follow you, Jesus. I'll do whatever you desire me to do as long as my sins can be forgiven. As long as my life can be changed. As long long as I can be a part of what you're doing. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This Jesus that we serve is a Christ to be coveted. We need him just as much as I mentioned before, as a sinner outside the doors tonight. We need Him just as badly as the disciples needed Him. They had so much confidence when He was walking with them. They walked with a spring in their steps. They cast out demons. They healed the sick under the authority and the power of Christ. But as soon as Christ is gone, they get scared and they scatter. They needed Him. It wasn't until the day of Pentecost till Christ showed them how the Holy Ghost could come and He could empower them. Amen. Through the Holy Spirit. Amen. As, as spoken of in Joel chapter number 2. But they, until then they scattered. They were afraid. They were worried. Even after the resurrection of the dead they hid inside Paul's rooms. They were worried about what was going to happen. Amen. They were concerned. Amen. They, they didn't believe it. They weren't sure what it meant for them. They weren't sure what to, what to understand about it. Amen. They wanted Jesus. They just knew they needed Jesus. They left him. They scattered. Time after time, Christ proves to them that they need him. Chapter 9, this man with a palsy had four, had friends taking care of him, but he needed Jesus to forgive his sins. In chapter 8, verse 23 through 27, they find themselves crossing that sea and they find themselves in a storm and they be... They got scared and they, they cried and Lord save us and he he gets up and he just can't believe it, if you will. He says, Why are you fearful? Oh ye little faith. I'm in the boat with you. And you're still afraid. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> oh, praise God. What he's dealing with them is not their knowledge that he is the Son of God, it's him them believing in him. As the Son of God. Believing that He has the power. Understanding. Having that confidence. That they needed 
been here and time and time again. They prove that to us uh, over and over and over and over again. Uh, amen. But for those who were hungry enough to follow, uh, amen, through some of the rebukes, uh, amen, following the Son of Man when who hath nowhere to lay his head, uh, as we've already pointed out, uh, following the Son of Man to the places uh, where he do a good deed uh, and they they, they try to they try to kill him. Uh, they drive him out of town. Uh, hey, when we read at one point on Mars Hill uh, where they tried to force Jesus over a cliff. Uh, hey, to see, he kind of was meek and lowly. Uh, hey, man, until they got him all the way back. Uh, and then it's just like he said, all right, enough of this. And they just parted. He walked right on through. Uh, they had no power over him. Uh, hell, I had no power over him. Uh, they could not take him. Uh, they couldn't kill him until God said it was time for him to go. Uh, amen. They had to, uh, through Christ, uh, amen, we have the authority and the power in this world. Uh, but it's only because of who we see him as. Do we see him as the Savior of the world? Or do we see him as the one that we desire to follow each and every day? We give up life. We give up limb. We leave our tax collecting behind. We leave everything behind to follow Jesus. This old song says, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back. Oh, no turning back. Hey man, is that our, is that our plea of our heart here? Can we find in chapter number 10... To those that followed him, even Matthew, this publican, and Simon Peter, and Bartholomew, and Thomas, and James, and and, uh, Thaddeus, and Simon the Canaanite, Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, uh, who also was to betray him, uh, but they were all here. They found themselves. Uh, Amen. Christ calls unto them, he says, the harvest truly is plenteous, uh, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers uh, him to his harvest. Uh, and when he had called unto his twelve disciples, uh, he gave them power. Uh, it, it wasn't just uh, when he called unto the multitude, he gave them power. Uh, or when he called unto those who just needed a, a broken leg healed. Uh, amen. But he called unto his disciples. Uh, he called unto those uh, that he chose him to follow him. Uh, he called unto the people of God uh, that had put their faith in him. Uh, they had been in the boat uh, when he said, Peace be still. Uh, Amen. They walked on the water when he said, come. Amen. They were the ones. When Christ said, take this bread and hand it out, they had handed it out. They did whatever was asked of them. And now, here he comes to this point. He gives them power. Mm. And he's 12. Jesus sent forth and commanded them. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Freely ye have received. Freely give. (laughs) And so what Christ tells him to do, hey man, is that this is the very thing. If I can summarize my message, I'm done. Come get me a song here. Hey man, but what he tells him is that you have followed me. I have given unto you as you would take and now the time has come for you to give unto everybody else that's hungry amen just like amen when he fed the 5,000 he took that food and he said here take it 
to those that are hungry. That's what Christ is wanting us to do. Yes, he wants us to take unto those that are hungry. But yes, he also wants us to hunger and to thirst after righteousness to our field. He wants us to hunger after him. As we read in Hebrews this morning, holy fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Amen. Do it all to stand. Following the master, following the savior. Amen. Being a disciple of Christ. Not just a groupie. Amen. Being a disciple of Christ, a follower, that term is used so loosely today. In fact, I've had them ask me, are you a follower of Christ? I said, I sure am. Are you saved? Well, I'm a follower of Christ. I try to be like... So I didn't ask that. Are you saved? Well, I guess so. Well, I, I don't if you can, if you don't know that you're saved, then you're not getting my question. Are you born again? <laughs> I'm a follower of Christ. That's great. They don't really understand what that term means, do they? They haven't been saved. They haven't been born again. They haven't had a, a time when they handed their life over to Christ. Amen. We're not just supposed to be hearers of the word, but we're supposed to be doers. And I don't, know, I don't want to discount all the other folks that did things for, for Christ during his life. I don't want to just put the spotlight just on those 12 as the only ones that, that were doing any good. So don't get me wrong here. But we do notice in the word, hey man, and, and, as he is, uh, uh, the, the, there were a lot of folks, they just came to hear. They just came to the crowd. They just came to be a part. They came out just like anything. They wanted to see what was going on. They wanted to be a part of the great thing. They wanted to do something that, uh, you know, they, they wanted to see the lame leap up. Woo, man, that's great. Look at that. Nobody else could do that. But there were some who said, I want to help. Give me a basket. Give me a basket. I want to go out. I want to pass the bread out, Jesus. Hey, some, there were some that said, hey, I don't have much, but I got five loaves and two fishes. Hey, we do what you can with it, Lord. Hey, but there were some that said, you know what? serving the Lord. They were the ones that chopped the wood for the fire. They were the ones that cleaned the tabernacle. They weren't Levites. They weren't Judah. They weren't of any child of Israel. But they see who God was. And they said, I want to serve him. I don't care what it means for me. I just want to serve him. Amen. And that's what Christ is calling for. He's looking for some folks to recognize who he is. And say, you know what? I don't care. But I just want to follow Christ. Praise the Lord. Let's find a place to pray tonight. Everybody in the wood. Let's talk to the Lord. Amen. Make a fresh covenant. A fresh uh, contract with